Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and thank you very much for joining us. I'm your host, FD4C5.tv, and today we are going to bring you a review of Fetch.ai, is the narrative artificial intelligence. So, one of the projects that is of interest to us is Fetch.ai. So, what I'm going to share with you in this video, guys, is not financial advice. If you do require financial advice, I think by now we know what to do. Please approach someone who's trying to give you financial advice. Without further ado, let's jump into Fetch.ai. So, what is Fetch.ai? Well, it is an artificial intelligence lab building an open permissionless decentralized machine learning network with a crypto economy. Fetch allows anyone who wants to connect and access secure data sets by using autonomous artificial intelligence to execute tasks that leverage this global network of data. Fetch.ai democratizes access to artificial intelligence technology with a permissionless network. For example, people can automate everyday tasks such as booking a parking space or a flight using Fetch's automated bots known as Digital Twin representing the user. Here is a brief evaluation of Fetch.ai's value proposition. It maximizes time to perform everyday tasks using artificial intelligence. It decentralizes finance and it brings simplicity to those who do not understand some of the sophisticated strategies in use across the financial system. For example, Fetch.ai could recognize a token trading at a lower price on one crypto exchange than others and take advantage of the difference for you. Automatically practice some may call arbitrage. For example, Fetch.ai also facilitates permissionless transactions over the blockchain. Here are some of Fetch.ai's key components. Fetch.ai's technology stack has got four distinct elements, which are the digital twin framework, which provides modular components that help teams build marketplaces, skills, and intelligence for digital twins to connect with. The open economic framework, which provides search and discovery functions to digital twins. The digital twin metropolis, which is a collection of smart contracts that run on a web assembly or WASMI virtual machine to maintain an immutable record of agreements between digital twins. The Fetch.ai blockchain is another component and this combines multi-party cryptography and game theory in order to provide secure censorship resistant consensus as well as rapid chain syncing to support digital twin applications. And along these key components we also have Fetch.ai's platform's core component. We've got the learner where each participant is the learner in the experiment representing a unique private data set and machine learning system. The global market which is the result of a collective learning experiment where the machine learning model Model is trained collectively by the learners themselves. Then there is Fetch.ai blockchain that supports smart contracts which permit coordination and governance in a secure and auditable way, as well as the decentralized data layer based on IPFS or interplanetary file system, which enables the sharing of machine learning weights between all the learners involved. So as part of our brief review, we are going to apply our usual 13 elements, which are as follows. We've got decentralization, security, scaling, interoperability, project team, use cases, age of the project, as well as the tokenomics. Now, when it comes to decentralization, Fetch.ai is an autonomous machine-to-machine -machine ecosystem. Its agents work as a network of independent parties and interact with each other directly via the blockchain network. To perform their tasks, they connect and negotiate with one another. The process of autonomous economic agents finding, negotiating, and interacting with one another is all automated and requires no user input. This further removes the reliance on intermediaries, thereby reducing costs. As far as security is concerned, Fetch.ai is security is provided by differential privacy, which helps avoid exposing users' private data sets when generating updates. Fetch.ai's blockchain also supports a combination of multi-party cryptography and game theory, providing secure and censorship-resistant consensus. The requirement to put up FET, FET, which is the ticker symbol for Fetch.ai's token, in order to deploy a digital twin helps to prevent the platform from being flooded with some and malicious digital twins or autonomous economic agents to give them their official name. Now on to scaling. As an autonomous machine-to-machine -machine ecosystem, Fetch.ai's agents work as a network of independent parties and interact with each other directly via the blockchain network. The more machines join the network, better it is for the interaction among the agents. And because the process is all automated and permissionless, the process is relatively fast. In addition, digital twins that have already performed a specific task are also available to interact with a new digital twin that is performing the same task for the first time thereby sharing data and or information and making the learning process faster for the new entrant. Now onto interoperability. Starting with machines themselves or bot twins, each digital twin is capable of negotiating with another twin within the fetch ecosystem. New or first time digital twins can also interact with existing digital twins demonstrating the interoperability of digital twins within the same ecosystem. Fetch.ai is also supported by Ethereum and Cosmos SDK. Now 
are on to page.ai's use cases. The first one is that the page.ai's utility token that FET is designed to find, create, deploy, and train digital twins and is an essential part of smart contracts and all on the platform. Page.ai services are used to optimize DeFi trading services, transportation networks, that is parking and micro mobility, smart energy grids, travel, essentially any complex digital system that relies on large scale data sets, including healthcare, finance, and transport, like I've already said, as well as energy. Developers use the FET token to access machine learning based utilities and to train autonomous digital twins and to deploy collective intelligence on the network. Validators must also stake the FET token or FET token in order to help validate transactions and to maintain their reputation. As far as social media presence is concerned, Fake.ai has got over 135,900 Twitter followers as well as just over 4,600 Discord members. The project team, Fake's project team consists of experienced professionals in the fields of artificial intelligence, blockchain, cryptography, and economics. Members of the Fetch.ai team have worked at entities including DeepMind, Google, Apple, and JP Morgan. There are at least 59 team members according to LinkedIn. Now on to tokenomics. Ticker symbol FET, FET, token supply 1.153 billion, circulating supply 90%. As far as the token supply is concerned, both CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko could not agree. They've got different information. One says there is an ad cap, the other one says there isn't. We went with the one with the ad cap. Anyway, now on to token allocation. Public sale, 5.687%. Private allocation, 0.758%. Additional tokens for private investors, 1.422%. Private sales, 6.05%. Seed investors, 4.968%. Founders, 18.956%. Advisors, 9.478%. Future release, 14.293%. Mining reward, 14.217%. Foundation, 18.956%. 18.956%. Public sale, and this is stating as unsold, 5.22%. Again, I have no idea why these numbers are not rounded, but I suppose the percentages were calculated after the event. Anyway, according to our own review of the tokenomic, we came to the conclusion that inside the token allocation was around 80% at the time of the token allocation, but as a majority of the tokens are already on the market, it's approximately 90% already in circulation. The risk of insiders dumping their tokens onto new investors is greatly reduced. There is also the small matter of conflicting data, like I said, from two leading crypto listing platforms in CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap. Does it, does it have a hard cap? Does it have any final supply? We have no idea, but we went with a fixed cap. Anyway, if you know any different guys, let us know in the comment section. Moving on. Now, like I indicated at the beginning of the video, we are going to be ranking these elements, those 13 elements, and here's a quick rundown of the elements again. You've got decentralization, security, scaling, interoperability, project team, age of the project, use cases, tokenomics, which includes initial token supply, maximum tokens available, circulating supply, as well as inside the token allocation. So what we're going to do is allocate a score of 0 to 10 to each of these 13 elements, and then we aggregate those scores to give us an aggregated score. It is that aggregated score that we're going to classify under the following risk category. We've got the highest risk, which is the no-go category. Then we have the one just below that, which is a slight improvement on the highest risk. We we'll call that could go to 0. And then you have the potential category, where the risk is greatly reduced. And then the go for it category where the risk is at a minimum those are the four risk categories so here are some of the scores we've allocated to page.ai starting with decentralization 5 points out of 10 on security 7 and a half points out of 10 on scaling 7 and a half points out of 10 interoperability 5 points out of 10 project team 10 points out of 10 social media present via twitter 7 and a half points out of 10 social media present via discord 2 and a half points out of 10 age of the project 5 points out of 10 use cases 7 and a half points out of 10 tokens issued at project launch 5 points out of 10 tokens in circulation at the point of recording 7.5 points out of 10. Maximum tokens are valuable 5 points out of 10 and inside the token allocation 0. Why? Because 80% is above our threshold of 35% at the top end. Therefore, we will proceed and give page.ai 0 points on that element. You guys agree with the scores we've allocated to page.ai? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And if you were to rank these 13 elements, what scores would you give that were different to the ones we've issued? Again, if you don't mind sharing, let us know in the comment section. Now, those scores, if we aggregate them, they give us a mega total of 75 points out of 130, which puts page.ai into the could 
go to zero Kato, do you guys agree that page.ai could go to zero consider the narrative currently official intelligence even the legacy entities are going for it your google your microsoft and so forth and page.ai are doing theirs on blockchain which one is going to succeed which one is going to come out on top i know we've got quite a lot of competition within the crypto space as well as far as artificial intelligence is concerned or ai do you think fetch will come out on top let us know your thoughts in the comment section and do you hold fetch let us know again in the comment section as far as i'm concerned publicly we do not hold fetch.ai the fed token in our public portfolios but i do hold fetch.ai in my private portfolio there you have it for clarity and transparency i do hold fetch.ai and i'll continue adding to my position what are your thoughts guys let us know in the comment section until next time this is fd465.tv signing off for now bye